redraw this one one more time. And this is our V. We applied here. And this is our neutral axis. And here, this is the line of the symmetry. So now on the cross sections, we can copy the information here. This line representing is here. So along here, the shear flow, the shear stress is in, that, in this direction. Where is maximum? And for example, along the upper side here, the shear stress we copy from this information, so that will be equal to in this direction. Okay, symmetric on the other side, the string stress will be in this direction. On the bottom side, you can play around for the procedures. The string stress is in this direction. And here will be in this direction. Okay. And how about this string stress along this line here? What is the string stress along this line? We can make it. The third one. So right now, if I make the two cuts here, okay. So for example, I want to calculate the stress here. The average shear stress equal to zero, because for this case, Q equal to zero. The Q equal to zero for this shaded area. Why? why? Because Y bar equal to zero for this shaded area is Y bar right uh, uh, on the neutral axis. So Q equal to zero. Um, so that means else equal to yeah. Zero. So so here, uh, skip of the detailed calculations. The the case the one two three cases that could be the template for uh, you or many. Uh, exercise of a similar problem, but to make the conclusion is this. For box-like structure, <coughs> if this is V, if this is V, neutral axis, neutral axis, <coughs> the distribution of the shear flow will be like this. This is the line of the symmetry starting from here, zero. Okay. Starting from here, this is a line of the symmetry. The same thing. So the shear stress on the line of the symmetry equal to zero. And then begin on the size, the shear stress must be in the direction of the shear of the transverse loading. Okay, so on this side, the, the shear stress should be vertical. Should be vertical like this. And then on the top, simply is this. The concept is they diverge from here and go into the flow align to the flow, and then go to bottom here, they merge or converge to here. So for this case, basically here is something like this. Okay. So this is the, um, the old textbook didn't tell uh, so much detail, but here, I just use one, two, three uh, cases uh, for demonstration of the, I would say, symbolic calculation. And in particular, case two, and that will be applicable, applicable for uh, to many uh, similar type of the problems. 
including the one in our text and in our homework this week. So let me see if, if I can find it. And again, uh, greetings to you. Uh, turn on, turn on the light. And this is on all slides. And again, the slides have the, I lay out the detailed explanation and calculation in the handouts. And so basically that is the result, and that is the one I just mentioned, okay? And this is the content of the textbook. And trying to explain, I'm trying to explain it, this concept, okay, this concept. And, <clears throat> This is a summary of what we have done. And again, in the direction of the V, the shin stress or the shin stress must be aligned to the direction of the V. Okay. And on the uh, horizontal dimensions, they basically they uh, for this case this is come to here and then converge and then go here diverge. And here is diverge from the middle point here, that is zero, and then go to kind of circle in. Uh, circulating that way. So now for this example, this is the one in uh, similar to our homework. So for this case, how can we do this one? The strategy is this. For example, here for, for this case, we want to calculate the, for example, the average shin stress at point A. And this statement to me is a little bit ambi ambiguous. So here, let me restate the problem here. For example, A is here. This is a point A. And I should be better to say, I want you to calculate what is the string stress around A. And there's a two, there's a many cards. For example, say, if I pick this card, Okay, so that means for this example, actually, I'm asking you to calculate what is the average shin stress along this cut. Okay, there's a one option. If you like, you can put another option is taking this whole random cut. Basically, that gives us the different uh, two kinds of the shin stress components. But here, we focus on this one. So for this case, we can utilize, again, this cost won't give us, uh, won't uh, allow us to bisect the whole entire cross section. In this way, we have to make another eight, another additional cut to make a bisection to calculate for capital Q. So, one strategy is this um, this is a direction V is applied vertically, so this is a neutral axis. You just listen, okay, and then I try to catch up the time. But here it's available on, um, on Blackboard. This is the direction of the V. This is a neutral axis, which is vertical to V. And we know that from our property of the box beam, the stress here is zero. Okay, and now I make this one. I basically, I use additional card allow me to put to serve this as the shaded area. So for this case, I pick this one. So this is my shaded area. And again, uh, because the two cuts, once we involve more than one cut, then we better to start with the shear flow concept. So which means, step one, calculate the shear flow, which is VQ over I. And for the multiple cards, basically this is for multiple cards, each I represent is one card. Okay. I equal to one, for example, for this case is to two, we make two cards. At each card we have a corresponding shear flow. For example, let me call this is Q1. This is Q2. So for this case, it's Q1 plus Q2. Using the properties of a box beam, we know that Q1 equal to zero using the box uh, 
cross sections properties. Okay, so in this case, we can eliminate one unknown. So that means this shaded area give us Q. Then here we can find Q2. So for this case, this is the Q. We calculate for this shaded area in that much. And then we once we have the Q2, then the second step is we simply tau along the AA, this cut simply is Q, the shear flow divided by corresponding thickness here. And that one in one equation simply is like this. Okay, so which means if you go to the traditional method, VQ over IT, you calculate Q, there's no problem. Using traditional method, you're going to decide what is T. For this case, how you determine T is hard. If you're going to use this one plus this one in your calculation, then you'll get the wrong answer. Again, the shear flow in here and here is not the same. This is the first approach. The second approach is this. We can use symmetry. For example, if we're interested in here, so why not I make another cut here? So because the two cuts are symmetric with respect to the line of the symmetry, so here we assume that the shear flow here must be equal to that one. So for this case, again, the step one to calculate the total shear flow, Q2 plus Q2 equal to VQ over IT, what is the Q? Now the Q is this one. The Q is the area that being cut, and now we have two cuts here. Or otherwise, if you want to go to the wrong way, you can pick this, uh, this shape as the, for your Q. That will, give you, that will give you the same value. Okay, so VQ over I. The same thing, the Q is corresponding to this one. And now we have this one, so basically Q2, will be equal to, for this correspondence, will be VQ over QI. Okay, once you have this one, you can double check this one because for this case, the Q has been doubled from our previous one, so this will be the double from our previous one, divided by Q, so basically this calculation is the same as the previous one. Got it? And now the same, uh, so for this case, we have either Q2, so Q2 is represented is either side, so we simply divide by corresponding thickness. And give a try, and the similar way on the point B, 